look at this. What a freaking mess. Los Angeles, California, everyone. Honestly, I think it's one of my least liked cities in the USA. If you've been paying attention, I was in LA exactly a year ago. I drove around a two square mile of downtown and made a video about the homeless problem there. It went all viral and got on Fox News. People hadn't really seen it like that before. I don't know why. It's been like this forever now. Since I was in California for the homecoming tour, I thought I should go back to LA and see if it's the same. But this time, I figured I'd drive into the rest of the city. The goal was to just drive around without an agenda and see how things looked in every pocket of LA. So I spent an entire day meandering around this place one day to see what I could see. And boy, did I see. The Los Angeles metropolitan area is constantly growing and changing. The central district is full of new buildings. Why is Los Angeles an exploding city more than Chicago or London or New York or anywhere? Look at how clean that used to be. LA was a modern city, a world leader in so many things. Unless you're old, you probably don't know how great Los Angeles, California once was. It's a blue state now, and not because of all the tarps. This is home to high gas prices, inflated housing costs, gang violence, high taxes, drug use, road rage, forest fires, drought, immigration, and a new law that lets people out of jail. <laughs> Seems like a wonderful place, right? Here's a map of where I wound up driving on this day. It was terrible driving around here in the middle of the day. But the rule was I couldn't take a freeway because I'd miss a lot of the blight. I don't think there's a neighborhood in Los Angeles that isn't affected by homelessness anymore. Right now we're in Hollywood. That's where I stayed for the night. My first stop was Hollywood and Vine. I had heard that there were a lot of homeless people here in the subways. I didn't see any. I'd actually planned to go into the subways at many stations, but as I learned, the LAPD had actually enforced a camping ban in the transit centers. They were trying to get all the homeless people out of the subways and off the buses. That's new. But that's the latest trend in California these days, actually enforcing homeless bans. Everyone's had enough of this, so they had to do something. Well, that something really doesn't work. They take the tents down and they tell these people to go get help, but they just move on to the next homeless spot. This guy named Q got some headlines because he built a movable house out of wood. He pushes it around Hollywood and he said no one's asked him to move it yet. Oh my God. Next, I went to Mid Wilshire. That's a big financial center in Midtown. There were homeless people wandering aimlessly along its main streets. And just off the main drags, I saw little tent cities all over the place. So I parked and walked through one of them. When you turn down a side street that looks like this, you can just feel the energy change. And you can definitely smell it. A lot of us feel awful for the homeless people who are desperate like this. The guy standing out in the middle of the road screaming at cars. The woman stealing kids' bikes. The old man banging his head on McDonald's window. But most of these people chose this life. They choose to fight it out in the streets in full public view. I remember back in the day, homeless people didn't want to be seen. Now they want to be seen. They live in parks and in alleyways but the sidewalks are the go-to choice for most of the homeless in LA. Here's downtown again. This is just unbelievable. If you haven't seen what Skid Row looks like, this is what Skid Row looks like. This is clearly the most dangerous encampment because the people here are just wild-eyed or they're fast asleep. But every time I drive through a homeless encampment, it's always the downtown camps where there's most of the tension. Every time I've been yelled at or threatened or felt the worst about being there, it's always in a downtown. I went back and looked at what I'd recorded the last time I was in Skid Row and it's almost identical. 
same number of tents in the same places, just different people in them. And I'd heard LA had moved a lot of these people out of here so they could develop the area. Maybe not. But can you imagine trying to shop down here? I don't know how this part of town even functions. And the worst part is almost all these people are going to die homeless and often alone and nobody's going to care. So why doesn't LA just move these people out of here? Because they can't. There was just a court ruling passed in this state which says if there's not enough shelter beds for people, then you can't tell people they can't camp in public. <laughs> and LA is far short on the number of shelter beds. At last count, there were 13,089 shelter beds in LA County. And there's like 75,000 homeless people here. That's not enough shelter beds. And they're never going to catch up because the homeless numbers are going up. So they'll never be able to tell these people that they can't do this. LA's latest solution is this. They made a big map that says, if you're going to sleep outside, you can't sleep here. The yellow parts where schools are at, the red are libraries. Anything gray, I guess they can camp there. But I actually think they might be kind of enforcing this map's no camping zones. I went to MacArthur Park to see what was going on there. I think it's the biggest park in LA. It's pretty much in downtown. There were a lot of people here, I'll tell you that. But I didn't see any tents or sleeping bags. Everybody was laying down, but I guess if you're not covered up, then you can live here? I don't know. Look at this chart. There are a lot of countries that have less homeless people than we do. And a lot of these aren't wealthy countries either. Some are in Africa, some are in South America. We might be worse than a third world country. I mean, Mexico City, it's twice as big as LA, and there's only half as many homeless people there. So Los Angeles has four times as many homeless people as Mexico City per capita. And that is a shame. They think there's about a half million people who are homeless in America on any given night, but those estimates have to be low. There's so many people who don't want to be counted or found. And by the way, LA County has 13% of the country's homeless population. I mentioned earlier, LA has a big problem with homeless people sleeping on its trains and on its buses. LA's Metro says it spends $27 million a year trying to figure out how to deal with its homeless riders. Some have called LA Metro a de facto homeless agency. I guess they reached out to 12,000 different homeless people on the buses and trains last year, and about a quarter of them accepted temporary shelter. Union Station used to be open 24 hours, but it's closed at night now because the homeless people were using it for a place to sleep and do drugs and pee. The actual people with jobs who rely on LA's transportation, they're pissed about it. All the outbursts, the peep and poo stained seats, and the random attacks. I don't think a lot of these people want to be in shelters. A lot of time, they don't want to follow the rules. You can't be a druggie in a shelter. Plus, I'm sure a lot of these people don't want to be confined into small rooms with one another, right? I don't know what you can do. I mean, it's easy for us to get mad at the city leaders, but they can't stop people from doing this. And I honestly don't think these people want our help. So they're just going to sit out here in plain view and struggle to survive. Get this, though. The governor just passed a new bill called the CARE Court that says people suffering from mental illness and drug addiction can forcibly be treated. Now, I don't know what forcibly treated means, but it kind of sounds like they're going to order people to sleep in a room and take meds. I tried to record every homeless tent in person and everything I could, but it was hard by myself. There were just so many things to try to get on camera. You tried driving around LA with your camera stuck out the window looking for things. I bet if I went down every street and random alley that had tents in it, it would have taken me five days. Tons of people come here on a bus. That's the thing cities do. They send their homeless back and forth on buses to get rid of them. They call it greyhound therapy. Cities spend millions shipping their homeless back and forth crisscrossing the country like cattle ranchers sending herds across the plains. 
And these are one-way tickets, by the way, paid for by you and me. And when a city puts you on that bus, they don't care what happens to you as long as you don't come back. Some of the cities make you sign a contract that if you do come back, they won't give you anything anymore. But it's a money saver. Cities say it costs 80K a year for every homeless person. That includes hospital costs, medical care, policing, and other things they give them. And a bus ticket's a few hundred bucks, right? And I know there's agencies that do good. There's job placement agencies. Some nonprofits will try to reunite these people with their families, but usually their family's sick of them too. Not everybody here is a druggie. There's people here that fled abuse. Some lost their jobs. But driving around, I wondered how many of these people are trying to get their lives in order and how many just don't give a shit anymore. It's also worth mentioning that here in America, it's easier to get fentanyl than it is get baby formula. That's terrible. California state law gives everybody out here $200 a month minimum, but they know how to work the system and get much more than that. Tents, drug paraphernalia, food, cigarettes, additional welfare. Plus they get away with whatever, peeing on things, assaulting people, stealing, they're closing down pharmacies all over LA because of the crime associated with homelessness. They're also closing down a bunch of Starbucks. Santa Monica closed its chessboard park thing. That sucks. I think it's just gonna get worse here. The COVID rent free thing is over and they can't possibly build enough tiny houses or whatever to put all these people somewhere. I think a few years ago, LA promised to build a bunch of affordable housing and they only got around to building like 5% of it. There's a lot of Chinese people in LA. I wonder if they see this stuff and say, you know what, I'm not gonna go to Los Angeles now. That's actually bad because in case you didn't know, we have a population decline problem. We need more doctors and teachers and stuff. Underpasses are the go-to spot and they smell the worst. Look, just a big party right in the middle of the road in the middle of the day. I don't think unaffordable housing is the reason these people are here. In LA, there's a big fight between the NIMBYs and the YIMBYs. The not in my backyard people want the streets cleared all this stuff, but they don't want the solutions in their neighborhoods. The YIMBY people are okay with sharing their neighborhoods with addicts and former criminals. They are severely outnumbered by the NIMBYs. But recently, here's some good news. They removed a bunch of red tape in the state for building small units, and it seems California is seriously considering rezoning areas for affordable housing. So that's good. People say, oh, we gave another 60 billion to Ukraine. We could have solved homelessness with that money. But how would that work? If we gave all of these homeless people in California a home, would they get back on their feet? Or would they trash the place and do drugs all day? You're in public, bro. Permission. You got permission to film me on the streets? No, who do I ask? Who's in charge here? I went to Beverly Hills. I didn't see any homeless stuff there. If this nice grassy area was in a poor part of town, I bet there'd be people camped here. The Sunset Strip touristy area didn't have much going on either. I'm sure these neighborhoods complain. I'm sure they all complain. But why do some get no bums and others get bums? Money? I went to Venice, of course. This has been a huge hotspot for bummery. I heard that they were running people out of here, but you never know these days. There were homeless things all over down here, but I think it was much worse here just a bit ago. I even went to Long Beach to see what things looked like there. I had heard that people in Long Beach were complaining that the homeless people were taking this blue line down to where it ends in Long Beach and were getting thrown off by the conductors when the night ended. 
All these light rail refugees in downtown Long Beach haven't gone unnoticed. A couple of weeks before I was here, a homeless man down here stabbed like five people in a random attack and some lady died. Long Beach didn't seem extra sketch to me, but I did have somebody here ask me for meth for the first and only time on this road trip. That was crazy. I'm like, do I look like I smoke meth? <laughs> Maybe I do. And of course, Hollywood. That's where I stayed the night I was here. I was about a block from the Hollywood Walk of Shame. It's disgusting here. Trash, pee, bums. This was only day four on the road trip, and I was actually kind of becoming immune to it. I stopped stepping so far aside from all the pee puddles. And walking around, I thought, here are all these fresh-faced, naive tourists from all over the world here to look at Hollywood. This is likely many people's first impression of the United States. We should be embarrassed, but we're not. I could have gone on and on down Hollywood Boulevard for miles, but it was getting old. This is gross, and honestly, I didn't really feel very safe out here at night. By the way, I stayed at the Hollywood Hotel, a very old and outdated place with a view of... nothing. Supposedly, Marilyn Monroe stayed here once. Not in my room, in the room directly above me. Maybe that's why my ceiling fan was so janky. The Olympics is making its way to Los Angeles in six years. I'm going to bet the city offers every single one of these people a free bus ticket to go wherever they want if they're still here. But on this day, it's a fight for survival. They're fighting for resources, and they risk their life every time they fall asleep. Los Angeles is a big sinking ship, like the Titanic. But at least the Titanic had its lights on when it went down. We're all pulling for California to get out of this funk. It's it's becoming almost, is this a funk or is it permanent? That's a good question. It's a really good question. Um, I'll say I know a lot of people um, who who definitely don't want this to be permanent. And they're Angelinos, born and raised. So it's just a matter of... Um, I think it's a matter of awakening people, you know, awakening them. I'll, I was one of them when COVID hit two years ago and our council member decided that he was going to put homeless people at our beaches and parks. <laughs> I thought, wait a minute, you're going to take away all of LA's beaches and you're going to take away the few parks we have and you're going to put you know, people who are severely mentally ill and addicted to drugs in our public spaces and not let other, like not give access to other, basically take away our access. And you're not going to give them proper services while you're doing this. This is, it's, it's just crazy. So I went and toured, started touring the city and I saw things that I had only ever seen in third world countries. And then I realized, oh, I've been living in a bubble. Right. So <laughs> um, I was guilty of it, too. I was really guilty of just living in my bubble. And we had a homeless task force in our community and we didn't really have, you know, I live in I live in one of the nicest communities of L.A. County. So we're fairly safe. We have to lock our doors and we get robbed every single day. And we have all kinds of things that happen that didn't used to happen. But it was nothing like what I saw in the streets of L.A. and what I realized what most Angelinos were dealing with that I didn't have to deal with. And so um, I think people are still in a, in a big bubble and they're not paying attention. And one thing that's become very clear to me is we're extremely desensitized to seeing uh, atrocity and depravity on the streets. And, and that is something that's that's the frightening part. So when you say, like, is this just what California is going to be? We're actually seeing it in, in states everywhere. So then I started doing my research. And and because of the work you do, you've obviously seen this. This is this, this is not just California. Now, we, of course, because of the weather, we have the highest numbers, but it's going on in every most big cities, definitely in blue states all over the United States in our capital. I mean, 
when I saw images of the park, you know, across from the Capitol covered in tents, then I realized, okay, so now we now we're just numb. Now we're just not at all paying attention to 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 what's going on. And we're not doing our homework as to to what's going on. You know, you said you reached out to me because I had done I had volunteered to do a homeless count in the most popular spot in all of L.A. You know, Venice Boardwalk, Venice Beach is famous. Everybody in the world comes to see if you come to L.A., you come to Venice Beach and they had done you know, a cleanup thanks to Sheriff Alex Villanueva uh, of the boardwalk. So the boardwalk was fairly uh, clear of homeless encampments and those kinds of things. But you went one block in and within just one precinct, I counted with my two counterparts with, with me that night on the homeless count last year, for our agency that's called LASA here in uh, it's the LA Homeless Service Agency. And, and they're, they're basically responsible for all homeless issues in Los Angeles. You can't do anything without LASA. And they came up with zero, zero in the hot bed of homelessness in Los Angeles, other than Skid Row, which of course has been around for, for many, many de decades. And so nobody can, can pretend like that's not happening. But the, the idea that they would pretend that it's not happening in Venice was- um, Why would really they do that? Why would they, why would they skew the numbers? Clearly all, there's, all you have to do is get out of your car in Venice and there's one. I mean, right? you don't even have to park your car. Um, and, and I guess, why would they do that? And then I guess the follow-up question would be, clearly, LA County says there's 75,000 homeless people. Do you think that number is higher than? Uh, well, it, it definitely makes me question if they count zero when there's 300. Right. You know, where else did they not count correctly? In my own community, I think they were off, but we only have you know, we're, we're looking in the, for an entire community, we're looking anywhere between 100 to 200, if I'm being very vague about the numbers, right? So if we're debating 20 or 30, that's one thing for a community of 30,000 people. But if you're looking at countywide, and, 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 you're, and if you're discounting, you know, 10, 20, 30%, in and in, in terms of Venice, obviously that was a much that was like a just a huge you could you could say it was a mistake, right? They had they did have issues with their software. And so I think they're trying to hide behind that, but we didn't allow that to stop us. When we noticed there were issues with the software, we said, let's let's do this manually. Let's make sure you get the data. We're not going to stop this. We're not going to. We, we have the numbers. Here they are. We know there's an issue with the software. We went back and forth with the staff and we said, here are the numbers. So there really is no excuse for that. And they're just standing by the fact that they they said it's an average. It's an average and they feel comfortable with it. What was the the what I think is more important to to really look into is we did the count in in February, and they didn't approve it until July. <laughs> and so when you do a count and you put it in a database, that number is instant. And they had an algorithm ahead of time. That algorithm, I used to be an admin, that algorithm, is it's instant. Those numbers, our computers, they're very smart. They operate immediately. You don't have to think about it. You don't have somebody with a pen and pencil trying to figure it out. It's instant because it's on a computer. And so, so not only did they wait all these months, but then it was further down in the spring that then HUD got involved. And so we now have the federal government recounting our numbers for us but they're not there and they're not on site and they weren't there that very specific night when we were doing a specific count. So the whole system, I would say the whole system needs to be looked at. And I can't answer the question as to why, because there's so obviously so many different parties involved. So now you have the federal government involved, you have the county involved, you have the city involved, you have the different districts involved. My council member, for example, he prides himself in being the hero of homelessness. Now, if you talk to his constituents who recall, who attempted to recall him and we had, we almost had the votes, we believe we actually had the count and that they screwed up the count. 
but he had he was elected on less numbers than what we actually got for signatures to recall him, even approved numbers. So obviously his constituents don't believe in him. And he claims that he was the hero of homelessness and that he reduced homelessness by 40 percent. But yet we walk out and we go and look in the streets and there's homeless people everywhere. So there's a lot of different issues at play. And the other thing is you've got to think about Los Angeles gets a billion dollars a year to handle the homeless crisis that we have. Well, in a way, I would think that some of our elected officials don't actually see it as a crisis, but maybe we see it as a bonus. Or an opportunity. Or an opportunity. And so in a way, it's like whether pe whether some people do it intentionally or not or whether there's nobody's doing it intentionally there's so much available in that billion dollars i hear that they don't even spend that but like they get all this money and they promise they're gonna build all these affordable housing it gets approved and they only do like five percent of whatever they say they're gonna do or they only spend a certain amount of money i don't, I don't know where the money's going so the what i ha what i have gathered is the money that doesn't get spent is the money that requires you to be very accountable. So HHH or a money that we get from the federal government from HUD gets sent back because you have to follow through. There are all these regulations behind them. You have to be able to say that you're following the requirements. Well, that takes a lot of work and a lot of effort. And there's no money in that. There's no benefit for somebody behind the scenes other than to do what's right for 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 the people on our streets now the what what i call the homeless industrial complex what many people call the homeless industrial complex is we have city officials who are able to give contracts out to nonprofits for all kinds of services now you then have, so then they, so basically you can, you, and you can give them to whoever you want. That's how it works. It's a no bid system. So then they're getting millions and milk, for example, to clear the, the boardwalk. After the sheriff arrived, our council member requested $5 million to clear the boardwalk, the Venice boardwalk of approximately 200 people, $5 million. Of those $5 million, more than 50% went to just pay the homeless service agencies, like just for the head people. So none of that, none of that money, none of half of the money actually went to helping in any way, shape or form the actual person who was suffering on the street. That's incredible to me. And that's, that's just one city and that's just one instance. I mean, it's going on. Tiny little story that goes on and on and on. And there's no accountability for whether or not it's actually a program that works. Obviously, uh, I didn't know about it. I doubt 99% of Angelinos had no idea this was going on. And then what you find is then these agencies donate and they fund campaigns. So, and it's going on every single day in Los Angeles. We have, um, you know, homeboy industries. So much money gets poured into that agency and straight from, you know, our leadership in Washington. And you have, uh, what's the other one? Um, uh, Urban Alchemy. They're up in San Francisco. They're huge there. Well, they're now huge down in Los Angeles. They get millions and millions and millions of dollars in contracts. But when you actually look at what's happening, we also have that going on with private security services because obviously everybody's been defunding our police agencies. So we're now hiring private um, security agencies, but you got to look at who owns these agencies and who's donating back to campaigns. So whether or not we want to and our elected officials are really trying their best to end our crisis, how can you end a crisis when too many people are making way too much money? So it's it's a it's a and the general public is not aware of it. Yeah, well, the general public isn't aware of. And I'm like you, I drove around in circles and I went up alleys and side streets that most people don't. I mean, when you drive across L.A., you stay on Pico or Olympic or the 10 or whatever. You don't go up 7th and make a left and, and go kind of through neighborhoods very often. Most people don't. 
And I think most pe people in LA aren't aware of the money mismanagement and the corruption. And they certainly don't see all the pockets that you've seen um, and that I happen to see a little bit of when I was driving around. Um, and I just don't know. I guess the question is clearly the way things are going are not working. The homeless problem in Los Angeles is getting worse. What do the smart average citizens think the solution should be? There's two camps. Uh, there's the, which is why, which is why it makes things very, very difficult. And that, it, and then it brings politics into it. So there's been a huge proponent and, and Mayor Garcetti has been housing first. That's his theory. So the theory is keep people where they're at on the streets um, and leave them there until you have enough housing for them. So their theory is the reason why people are living on the streets is because we just don't simply don't have enough housing. So we're going to need to build more affordable housing. So I don't know if you know how they calculate affordable housing, but affordable housing in a place like, you know, anywhere on the west side could be something considered where you you could be, you know, if you're making one hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year, you you are qualified for affordable housing. And whatever that whatever you end up paying is something that somebody who's, you know, low income could never afford. So you end up building all this affordable housing, but really somebody who would who's at risk of ending up on the streets could never afford to live in what they call affordable housing. But an engineer and, you know, some some kid out of like a, a, an Ivy League school and, and all of that, they're they're going to be able to afford to live in that affordable housing. So we're not actually so their theory is so obviously you could tell I'm not a proponent of housing first. So I'm a social worker, by the way. So I have I have a very different view of, of things. Um and, the, and so one, it, it, in my opinion, housing first is not affordable and it's just not working and it hasn't worked. So I wish they would stop that. And I'm sorry, I think that's my computer over there ringing. That's fine. So in any case, there's housing first as a solution that I believe has completely failed. And it is part of uh, Karen Bass's current plan. And then there is what people believe is bringing in temporary shelters and services first. And because, and so this is where my social worker in me kicks in and says, you can't heal somebody. You can't take care of somebody's mental health issues by putting a roof over their head. Now you can keep them warm, you know, uh, give them shelter, give them a place to put their things by giving them a roof over their head. But whatever issues that they've got going on that cause the behaviors that they're having or the feelings that they're having or that caused, you know, whether it's drugs, alcohol, you know, severe trauma or, you know, schizophrenia or like the list is really long, right? That ends, keep, makes people end up on the street. You're not going to take care of that by just giving them a roof. And sometimes it can be worse, especially if you're isolating people. So the best thing to do is to triage people and, and give and each individual is different. I mean, just look at the two of us. We're very different human beings. Every individual is different. So everybody's going to have a different experience of life, a different story, different trauma, different need. And so if you could triage them and give them a temporary roof over their heads so that they can then start building. But the service component is key. And so those are the two sort of ideas of what needs to happen in Los Angeles. And we're very divided because it's it's gotten political and it's always political. Whenever it's political, it's like there's money and, in, and power behind that. And so there's money and power behind it. And so you have a you have a a struggle and it's never you know sadly the way i see it is human beings are now being used as bait so the 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 suffering on the street is being used and abused and you have incredible agencies you know union um union rescue with andy bales it, it does incredible work most all the private agencies around los angeles who help the, the homeless, they actually have real results. You have zero accountability. So the other issue would be, you know, how do we solve this? Bring in accountability. LASA has no accountability. They keep getting money regardless of what happens. Actually, the more money they get, the more homeless people we have. You know, it, know. it it's too, it, 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 
it's just not it it's too profitable for us. Like it's just, they're not going to change unless we change the system. And we decide that the only way you get rewarded by money is if somebody is actually healing. Yeah. The more, it seems like the more money flows in and more homeless people stack up and it never really, they're never, I, I mean, I can't see an end to this. There's no way they can afford build that much affordable housing for 75 or a hundred thousand or however many people are out there. There's just nowhere to build. And there's just no, no and they're happen. building at, at rates of now up to $1.2 million per unit. It, I just <laughs> don't know. I, so a lot of people place the blame on Democrats. Do you agree or disagree with that or partially agree with that? Well, you know, I live in California. Everybody's a Democrat. So, you know, we can blame it on Democrats. I would blame it on people. Um, I would blame it on, if we're just talking about Los, Los Angeles specifically, on not paying attention. You know, we have to start paying attention to what's going on. We have to, to pay attention to our politicians. We have to pay attention to the policies in place. We've got to do our own research. We have to get active and involved because this is, this is our lives. Nobody can drive down the street now and not see what's going on. And if they're not seeing it, then it goes back to the desensitization issue. I see families with young children walking by, you know, people laying on the streets and you're not quite sure if they're even alive and they just keep walking. They don't even look. I mean, I can't imagine as a little girl walking down the street and seeing somebody laying on the street and not being deeply disturbed by that. But you now have people who are living in areas where it's every day all the time. So it's just like, well, this is just what it is. I've had people tell me that. Oh, my children just learned that, you know, they just figure out which homeless person is dangerous. And then they learn to pick up on the cues and the signals as to, you know, whether or not they're going to be safe, whether or not they need to get their mace out or not. I mean, it's this is. This is not the United States that I thought I was growing up in, and it's not a world that I wish on anybody in any country. I think that we have lost our sense of compassion. We have lost our, our connection to each other. And um, so it's a lot of components all at once. And uh, <laughs> I don't think it's a I don't think it's it's a party issue. I, if you look at the big picture, it certainly looks like it because you're saying, OK, well, I'm noticing this in it. We're noticing it more in blue states. So in a sense, you could say yes. But I think if you if you if you look at it more closely, it's it's not actually necessarily party generated. It is whoever is in whoever has the power and however they're getting um, the resources that they're looking for. So, so it's a yes and it's a no. Yes, somehow um, the Democratic Party has something to do with it in terms of how they're dealing with the issue. And no, it's a power issue. It's people are making money off of it and it's working for them. And um it has to stop, in my opinion. We we have to do something about it. How much worse do you think it can get in Los Angeles before it maybe peaks? So I was hoping that we had gotten there. I really was. I was hoping this is it. Come on. We're we're there's way too many people who are screaming about this. There are way too many people's lives who've been affected. You know, now we've got children who are traumatized by what they see every day and 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 being you know in schools like they have encampments all around schools and it's just it's you know my young kids have things seen things that i've never thought they would have to see um so i thought we had peaked and obviously we haven't um and you know you you make a good point when you say i don't know like is it ever going to turn are we or are we just going to accept that this is it i think you have enough people it doesn't take um you don't have to have everybody on board in order to change things you just have to have enough people and right now we have we have a far left extremist movement who's been working diligently for years behind the scenes very quietly, 
very, very quietly and efficiently, might I say, at changing things around. And the homeless industrial complex has been very efficient for them. They've made, they've been able to, that money has funded a lot of their political campaigns. So um, I believe that's going to shift because the it's it's being exposed the more people wake up to the homeless industrial complex they're going to shift it, you know all of a sudden we're going to want to clean our messes up and <clears throat> end the racket i just think they'll move on to another they'll create another industry maybe now it will be a housing industry right it'll be something else so i do think it will shift i think that the humanitarian crisis will shift they'll stop using um, homeless people as a way to make money. I, I just I just don't know if I have much faith that that corruption will end. I'll just think that it will shift. Well, I hope something changes. I think everybody hopes something changes because at this rate, if we're going to have like ten percent of our population is going to be without a, a house. Um, and uh, there's I, I look at charts and we're clearly have a lot more homeless people. Mexico has way less homeless people than we do per capita. Mexico City um, has like a quarter per capita that we have. I mean, other countries in South America, Brazil, way less of a problem. Um, even in the Middle East where they've got huge disparities and in, in rich versus poor, they don't have this problem. So we got- you, you, you do realize that America has the, 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 the proper funding and capability to resolve this overnight, practically yeah. overnight. Yeah. You know, we go into war-torn, broken down countries, countries where there were horrific natural disasters and we provide shelter overnight. So we have the capability of doing this and resolving it overnight. I actually believe it will happen. The only time that shift will come, well, that button will be pushed is when the right people decide that th that they have had enough and that and and also that there is a way to shift the 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 money the funding so you know if you're able to keep people satisfied those who who desperately need to get that funding and satisfied via other sources then it will happen then we will stop abusing human beings for power Hey guys, if you learned something new about America or what it's like to live in America, great! You should think about subscribing and turning on your notifications. You can also click one of these videos or playlists for more. This is Sage Nick's manager. This has been a Corner House Entertainment production. Are you looking to move and need advice? I do consulting. That's right. I'll sit down and talk about where the next perfect place for you and your family should be. I do it all the time. Together, let's find you a new home that's safe and checks all your boxes. And I can also help you find your new house too. Email me and I'll work with you on not just helping you figure out where to move, but I can help you find your perfect home too. That's right. I know awesome, reliable agents all over the country, and I'd love to connect you to somebody who can help you search for that perfect home.